Hannah Patton Kau is a third year BFA student majoring in creative writing. She has a passion for unfinished projects and second person perspective. When she's not busy stress baking her way through the semester or curating a dice obsession, she's writing fantasy and wondering how much detective crib could be squished in alongside her preferred job. Thanks everyone. Um, this is a memoir piece called Purple Lipstick Stains. I was 16 when I first thought I was missing a few vital human screws. I was 16 when I first felt like I was running too many laps behind everyone else my age. The local questionnaire at school is who's currently the hottest when they take off their shirt. Whose boobs look better in a bra in the changing rooms down by the oval. Who does askew ties and top button undone the best. Whose eyeliner is sharpest, creating the most sex appeal. I was 17 when my friends questioned whether or not I lived under a rock. It's a new school. It's a new friend group. They asked me who I would take down to the bathrooms on the other side of the sports hall. I asked them to do what. And they laughed and called me naive. I was 17 when one in the friend group told me to grow up and get over myself because I'd have to do it sooner or later. I was 18 when I learnt the word asexual. I was 19 when I told my mum for the second time, telling her that that's what I am and that I'm sorry for a reason I couldn't explain. I was 19 when my mum told me, that's okay, and that you don't need erotic physical intimacy to be human, to be alive. I was 20 when a friend laughed at me because I couldn't say what the sexiest part of Tom Hiddleston was. <laughs> I said he's pretty kind, because they were all waiting for an answer, like I was the tiebreaker. The whole table probably wasn't meaning to be mean when they mocked me. I was 20 when I learned that asexuality is a spectrum apart from the rainbow, yet still tied to its spine. I was 20 when I learned that there are so many layers to asexuality. I was 20 and a bit when I learned that grey sexual is just as valid as asexual, and that it can be as fluid as gender. I was 20 when I felt like Maybe I was going to be okay. I was 21 when somebody I barely knew told me I was leading them on. Then they changed their tune and told me to keep my waist small and to buy a padded bra. That I needed to fix my look to give anyone a reason to stick around. Funny thing was, when I told them that they so were not my type. Of course, as they so kindly reminded me, romantic attraction is only allowed after the whole sexual deal. That's not allowed for aces. Nope, that whole ball game is out of bounds and that experiencing romantic attraction for guys more than girls just means I'm jumping on that bandwagon just for attention. I was 21 and just a little bit when I thought that maybe they were right, and I was just doing it to fit in for the attention. That somebody I barely knew had more say over me and what I felt than I did. Asexuality is only reserved for those falling under the banner, and not anyone previously heteroromantic who might be questioning. I was 21 and a little bit when somebody I trusted told me I was only calling myself asexual because two of my friends were lesbians and I wanted to fit in. Not sure what I was trying to fit into, or from who I would get that kind of attention. You need to be extroverted to want to socialise on large enough scales with the drama they were implying. Introversion doesn't come with prepackaged social circles for more than two people. You need to upgrade your subscription for that. <laughs> Should I just get over myself? Should I just go out? go on Tinder, swipe a few times, find someone to sleep with just so I can check the box and everyone can leave it alone. So that, so that they'll stop asking me, how can you not be attracted to them? Like being down to bone is the only thing that defines attraction to another person. It's not falling in love with how their smile is lopsided, or falling in love with how they make sure that their dog can see out the window, or falling in love with how the sunrise looks on their skin at an hour way too early in the morning. You're, you're only allowed that if you want into their pants as well. I was taught that the one you love and the want to live your whole life with should also become your best friend if they aren't already. That you need to trust them as your partner, but also as your friend. And that not having the connection means you may miss out on the little bits that are, keeping, that are kept covered by the romantic veil of obliviousness. It's a team sport, not a competition. But I was 21, and I thought, what if they're wrong? Everyone else I talk to goes for looks first, even if the personality is what makes them stay. I was 21 and I thought that maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut. Maybe I should just let everyone pretend that I'm frigid, that I'm a prude, that I'm celibate. If it just means that I get a chance of not being scorned more for not coming from the cookie cutter. I was 21 and I felt sick trying to become somebody worth, worthy of being loved. I was 21, just shy of 22, and I dreamed that maybe I'd find somebody who I'd fall for, who I'd trust, 
and who wouldn't awkwardly cut contact after a confession and after an admittance. I was 21, but I am 22 and I am learning. I am 22 and I'm allowed to be me in my own pace. I am 22 and in the quiet of my own room, I paint purple over my lips and I dream of adventure. I am 22 and I am okay. Thank you.